Now from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Good morning, I'm Jim DeFeedy and welcome to this live special edition of Facing South Florida. In a few minutes, we will have the first and only televised debate between the two candidates for Commissioner of Agriculture you see sitting here, Republican Matt Caldwell and Democrat Nikki Freed. And later in the show, we will take a closer look at Amendment 4, which would restore the rights of nearly 1.4 million people who were convicted of a felony but have completed their sentences. And we will talk to Donna Shalala, the Democratic congressional candidate for the seat being vacated by Ileana Ross Layton. As it stands now, we are just 16 days from knowing the results of this year's election. Early voting starts tomorrow and mail-in ballots are pouring in 923,652 votes have already been cast, nearly a million. As you can see on your screen, roughly a little more than 400,000 Republican votes, a little over 350,000 Democratic votes, and a 158,000 NPA votes. So in other words, we are in the thick of it. And while most of the attention has been focused on the governor's race and the Senate race, there are other races on the ballot. The state's next attorney general and the state's next chief financial officer will both be chosen. And so will the next commissioner of agriculture and consumer services. And if you wonder why you should care, watch this. That person oversees an agency with 3,600 employees. They issue licenses for concealed weapons and inspect gas station pumps. They review roller coasters for safety and make sure the scales in your grocery store don't cheat you. They oversee one of the state's largest industries, agriculture, and help set standards for farmers to ensure water quality, a role that takes on greater importance given the ongoing algae crisis. The Ag Commissioner will play a role in Florida's burgeoning medical marijuana industry by setting rules on pesticides and food safety. And the Ag Commissioner is one of the four members of the cabinet overseeing issues related to clemency and the death penalty. Now, as you can see, we are fortunate to have the two candidates here in the studio to discuss the issues, but let's give them a more formal introduction. Republican Matt Caldwell is a seventh generation Floridian who works as a real estate appraiser and has been a state representative from Southwest Florida since 2010. He is endorsed by the National Rifle Association and Marco Rubio. Democrat Nikki Freed is a former public defender who now works as an attorney in Fort Lauderdale and has been a strong advocate for making medical marijuana legal in Florida. She is endorsed by labor unions and recently by Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren. So let's get going. I want to again thank you both for coming in. I think debates are healthy. I think it's good to have folks come in and discuss the issues. I want to start with the the probably the issue that most folks in the last year came to realize we had an ag commissioner's office and that was the issue of concealed weapons and the role that the nra may or may not be playing in that just as a way of a little bit of background tampa bay times did a did a story early this year finding that the, uh, the Agriculture Department failed to review national background checks on tens of thousands of applications for concealed weapons permits. This potentially allowed drug addicts and people with a mental illness to carry firearms in public. It also revealed that the former head of licensing claimed that she was, quote, worked for the NRA, end quote, and her job was to quickly process applications. Matt, I want to start with you. We, by the way, do you mind if I call you Matt and Nikki? Is that, is that fine? Okay, Perfect. sorry. Uh, Matt, I want to start with you. I think one of the concerns that people might have is because of your ties to the NRA, are you too close to the NRA to regulate this, this part of the, uh, the job? Well, first of all, just to make clear, no one should get a license uh, if they don't qualify for it. And if someone's not doing their job, they should get fired. Uh, look, I, I'm ultimately beholden uh, to the 21 million people uh, that are in the state of Florida. It's what I've done in the last eight years in the Florida House, representing 156,000 people, Republicans, Democrats, Independents. Uh, regardless of the fact that I do have a philosophy and a party, I feel like uh, anyone who serves in public office uh, has to respond to the needs of the constituents and be beholden to them before anybody else. So what would you do to fix this problem, though, that you saw? You said you would conduct a review on day one. What would that look like? Well, it does, uh, from everything I've read in both the news accounts and talking to Commissioner Putnam, uh, he ordered an internal investigation, uh, changed the process inside the department, so there is uh, a great deal of backup and review. There's no one person just approving a paper, piece of paperwork and not getting reviewed. Uh, but I want to be satisfied that that's uh, been completed. Uh, this was an issue, it appears, in 2013 and 14. We've not heard of any incidences since then in the last four years. But again, uh, it is such a critical responsibility. Day one of transition, I'm going to make sure I'm satisfied personally. Nikki? 
Well, you know, I think that's been one of the biggest issues that I've been discussing is the fact that for 13 months, background checks were not done in the state of Florida. And the citizens of our state expect the Commissioner of Agriculture to be respondent to them and it's put safety first. You know, and so we have seen that Mr. Uh, Commissioner Putnam didn't do that. He was beholden to the NRA. The NRA controlled the licensing process. And, and Matt, who has been, you know, endorsed by the NRA as A plus rating, had an opportunity when you were as chair of the government accountability, that's what your job was, to do a check on things that are happening in other branches. And you chose not to do it. And, and it really makes me very concerned for the fact that you're completely dismissive that this was a problem and that this is something that needed to be rectified and that I think the voters need to understand uh, that the NRA should not be beholden to anybody uh, that we are beholden to the citizens of the state of Florida and it definitely brings concerns to me uh, your connections to the NRA. I, I want to give you a chance to respond but first I just want to clarify one issue what I've heard you say is you don't think that the, this is a responsibility over concealed weapons permits that should fall under the Commissioner of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Yeah, absolutely. You I think it should go to FDLE? I think that we need to start that conversation to make sure that we are doing that in, the, in an effective and accountable manner. But yes, I think we definitely need to have the conversation uh, to put over into law enforcement. Law enforcement already has a vital piece of this puzzle. All right, I want to bring that. I want to let you respond to that and also the issue of whether or not FDLE should be doing well, this. Well, first of all, the role of leadership uh, means that you don't use political office just to gain political points. I, I think we clearly understood what occurred in 2013. You had a spike in applications from 400,000 licensees at the beginning of his term to now almost 2 million licensees. Uh, they got swamped. It, it's false to say that no one got background check. There are three background check systems, the final and third one that you also have to go through when you go to purchase a gun, regardless of whether you have a license. Uh, so there's no evidence that anyone's got, been able to purchase a firearm without going through the background checks. There's been no illegal firearm purchases. Uh, to the larger point of how this program should be operated, I think it needs to be accountable to some one that's elected by the voters. Uh, you should not uh, have it be subject to just bureaucrats. You should have uh, a, an elected official who's going to be held accountable, uh, who's responsible for overseeing it. I certainly am uh, I wanna, up to be uh, facing that. The, the Tampa Bay Times earlier this year did a story in which they documented emails that went from the, the NRA lobbyists to the agency when the agency had denied um, uh, concealed weapons permits. Uh, and then urging, demanding, really, that the agency change their mind about those concealed weapons permits. Do you think that that type of contact from the NRA to staffers within your agency is appropriate? Well, I think anyone has a right, all 21 million Floridians, to file any kind of complaint they want to. It's on uh, me and then subsequently the staff uh, to handle it in the correct manner. Uh, again, no one gets a license if they don't deserve it, if they don't meet the qualifications, haven't demonstrated that they're proficient with firearm safety, and understand the, the responsibility that come with it. I'll give you a last word very quickly on it, and then I want to turn to medical marijuana. <laughs> or we can turn to medical no, marijuana. No, I, you know, I just think that, you know, again, Matt, your dismissive attitude towards that there was other steps along the way that were taken uh, to prevent people from getting the firearms or getting their concealed weapons shows that you think that that step was not important, and that is going to continue uh, the policies that were instituted by uh, Commissioner Putnam, and I think that's very irresponsible. All right, I want to turn to medical marijuana because you obviously have been a strong advocate for it. You have also said that you would like to see um, the, uh, the Ag Commissioner's Office basically take over responsibility from the Department of Health. My concern, my question to you would be, is your campaign is largely financed by interest in the medical marijuana industry. In the same way that I question whether or not the NRA, he was too beholden to the NRA, are you not too beholden because of the campaign contribution to oversee the industry in an appropriate way? And is that really a power grab by you by wanting to bring it into the agency? You know, my first and foremost priority are the patients across the state. I've heard these stories from people who are suffering from uh, stage four cancer, uh, patients that are having these debilitating conditions and illnesses, and parents who are trying to get medicine for their children. And those are the people that I'm beholden to. You know, my campaign is supported by many people, including a, a, over a thousand individuals who have given campaign contributions who believe uh, that they deserve access. Seventy-two percent of our citizens voted for medical marijuana, and the legislature and the governor's office continue to put roadblocks. Those are my issues, and those are my concerns.
Let me give you a Do you believe that she's beholden to the medical marijuana industry? Well, I'll let the voters uh, evaluate that, obviously. Uh, I think the key point here is that I'm the only person at this table that's actually passed a medical marijuana bill. I helped craft the bill in 2014 before the constitutional amendment, convinced a Republican House, Republican legislature, got a Republican governor to sign a medical cannabis law into effect. That was the Charlotte's Web? The Charlotte's Web bill, and, and celebrated this year. I saw uh, Ray Ann, the, the young girl that I met, uh, has been two years seizure free because of the work we did uh, in that original effort. And look, I'm going to follow the law. You know, this is still federally illegal. It is interstate commerce, uh, binds most of our actions. All the controversial topics that you hear swirl around it are a direct result of that challenge. Let, me ask, you, let me ask you this, and then I, I want to ask you this question and then give you a chance to respond. There, there's a cap on the number of dispensaries that, that are allowed under, under the constitutional amendment. There's a couple of issues that stem from that. One, should the number be expanded? Second, should municipalities have the ability to basically zone, uh, zone in such a way as to prevent dispensaries from being in, in their cities? Well, the balance between local and state government is a constant topic. We obviously want to make sure patients have access, and that's going to be the first and foremost uh, priority. But uh, the bigger issue is, again, dealing with this interstate commerce question. Uh, the only way that I, as an elected official who take an oath to uphold the Constitution, uh, could support medical cannabis was to craft a system that guarantees it's only in the state of Florida. There's no cross-state no, interaction. No, but, but no I'm talking commerce. about within the state, the, the, med the number of dispensaries. Do you believe that the number of dispensaries that the state is currently lining up is appropriate, should it be expanded, and do you agree that, that municipalities should be allowed to essentially zone those dispensaries out of existence in their cities? Yeah, I'm a free market guy. I would like to see the market determine how many dispensers are needed, and again, to the local government question, uh, it's a constant balance we've got to find. I want to bring you in on that. Yeah, um, first off, I have been a strong opponent of the caps on the dispensaries. I do believe that is absolutely unconstitutional, um, that we are preventing access to patients, that when an, a license holder is capped with the amount of dispensaries, even in a free market range, means that they're never going to go to our rural communities or unpopulated areas. Uh, so I have always said that the caps on each of the license holders for the amount of retail shops that they have uh, is unconstitutional. And when it comes to even the, the local control, I've been a huge proponent that the local governments need to control this. They know their communities. They know what they need better than, than the people in Tallahassee. And so having an all-out ban is unconstitutional because, again, it prevents access to our patients. I, I want to just see if I can do this in yes or no question. Yes or no, should there be smokable cannabis in, in the state of Florida? If doctors tell me that's the way to get it, then I'll support it. I support smoking the, the pet flower. Okay. Up next, we'll continue our debate with the candidates for the Commissioner of Agriculture when we come back.